and welcome back to Wednesday. It is Trek Girls Mission Briefing, your weekly first look, in this case, or review, in this case, look at anything in the Star Trek universe from canon, non-canon official, and I'm going to put Discovery as own little side thing, because it's a bit of a mixed bag. And is this ship a mixed bag? You'll find out in this week's episode. So Stuart, what are we doing today? How are you? And give me a one word, what you think of this ship, after you tell us what the ship is and how are you. I am very fine. Thank you for asking. <clears throat> we are doing the T Plana Hoth from Discovery. Not to be confused by the Plana Hoth from First Contact, which right. is a lander. The Starfleet version. And you wanted one word to what I yes. think of this ship. Well, a few prop to mind, but the one I'm going to use is Cardassian. I, I, okay, I will need to follow up on that in a minute. <laughs> But I like it. Okay, so I'm gonna okay, I'm gonna do okay. I'll do one word and then three words. One word interesting. Three word expansion. Actually a lot. Actually, actually a lot, lot interesting. So it's oh. actually or actually very there you go, actually very interesting. Um Cardassian, go. Explain. What? Well, the Cardassian vibe kinda comes in when we see the bottom of the ship, but we'll do that oh. in a minute. <laughs> okay. First of all, let's just take a look at this overall ship. Um, T. Plana Hoth, obviously, uh, the, the Vulcan... Um, what, I Lambda. Vul well, yeah, it's, it's no, she's uh, important in Vulcan mythology. Anyway, hmm. so it's named after a Vulcan. Is it commanded by an all-Vulcan crew? Possibly, because we know in TOS, the Constitution-class ship, the USS Intrepid, was a full Vulcan crew. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure at this time period, you know, 10 years earlier, they were still doing the same kind of thing. Yep, and they mention so in Desperate Hours, the novel. I don't remember which, I don't remember which ship they mentioned that. It might be this. don't know. Uh, but yeah, that is a thing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and this is very... It's, it's a very interesting design. I do agree with you. Um, you see tie-ins visually, of course, with Enterprise. We got the, disc the Columbia-style deflector at the front with the two prongs. Uh, and I really like the design. I think it's very cool. And it, I think it fits into the time period fairly well, actually. Even more so than a lot of the other ships we've looked at from Discovery. And it'll be uh, just worth mentioning, we were going to look at a different ship and then accidentally looked at this ship. So this is kind of an instant like, ooh, okay, this one instead. Um, so yeah, I, for I actually forgot about this ship. And I think, unlike a lot of the Discovery ships, this is more than the sum of its parts. Does that make sense? Because it's a very simple arrangement of shapes, but actually the way they all work and and the choice of them actually comes across really strongly. Um, I'm sure we'll break down a lot of pieces, but yeah, this I think. I mean, if you want to go down to the simplest of things, this would work really well. I think as a twenty years past NX. The cells obviously aren't, but because the one thing I think links to Vulcans warp ring. And so their way of combining the warp engines rather than single struts, because if you look carefully, you can kind of see a vague sense of this sort of connect round, like it has a slight visual cue to that. They would say, well, we'll connect them via two attachment points. Like, so it's not a warp ring, but it's the warp engines attacked by a, a ring of metal, just in different configurations. So I can very much see the Vulcan ship, like the second gen Vulcan Earth hybrid, first gen maybe. Uh, very close ties to Enterprise um, and some other stuff as well. Uh, but yeah, you continue with what you think because you haven't given a full... Um... As you were talking, <laughs> I was looking at the ship more and I'm thinking, this is the Battlestar Galactica of the Starfleet or the Star Trek universe. You got the pods on the side, the, la <laughs> the Viper launch tubes and <laughs> landing. Come on now, it's, it is. Anyway, <laughs> I really like the way this thing comes together and ties in with the Enterprise era. I do like the addition of the, the those the struts at the front uh, going across the saucer. I kind of like that look. It looks like it's strapped on. It, um, it, it works. It's not too thick. It's yeah. not too thin. It, it's middly placed, but the but the way they're linked in different levels works really well between the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I do like the shape of the the warp nacelles. I mean, it doesn't really fit the time period. They should be cylindrical, but we know one of the commandments from on high was no cylindrical warp nacelles yeah. um so i mean I, I i i really like this i think it ties in very well with this well definitely with the discoveries engines well um, certainly i mean look at those front pieces they're almost yeah. identical i mean this is this is probably 
one of the closest to Discovery ships, mm-hmm. design-wise. I would say so, yeah. Which um, would almost link more to TOS, because it's it's got a more... Well, oh my goodness, it's tricky, because there's so much NX in it as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, if it's alright, we're going to go to the next picture. Yeah. And this is a shot of it from in the show, mm-hmm. uh, and from the back. Here, I, I really like... I like the overall shapes, but this I really get a Romulan type of vibe from this shape. Okay. The, the bot, the main body of the ship, with the way it kind of goes back like that, looks very much like the Romulan, the TOS Romulan warbird. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really like it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, now I'm wondering, are those shuttle bay doors at the back that are lit up with a light on each ah. side? You think? Well, I was about to say this is obviously, obviously. Uh, a pre TOS Miranda variant. Like, because I mean, if you look at that poll, it's almost identical to Miranda. They've just plugged mm-hmm. the inner cells in, like, dump rather than dump. Yeah. Maybe yeah. this time you have to have more points because, you know, the single uh, single pylons aren't advanced enough, blah, 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 blah. So if that's the case, then yeah, I would say yes. Two shuttle bays. The lights are very strong, but all the flares are really strong for some reason. This shot, all of them. Like, that's a miss, a, mm-hmm. a, a miss done setting, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, I would I would absolutely go with them being shuttle bays because that makes sense. I mean, I, I, you've got the Miranda style, how that works. It, it's a great design. You would use those shapes. Why not? I mean, if a saucer is so often used, why wouldn't the Miranda variant be so often used? You know, um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just it's just a flat. I mean, Discovery is a very flat ship. So this kind of fits into a flatter Miranda style, which is more Discovery era. The coloring, oh. coloring interests me, but that's just discovery. I mean, they all have this kind of brownish, copperish hue to them, which is very um, uh, Kelvin. At least what we it, saw from the movie. Yeah, yeah, very Kelvin timeline esque. Um, so it's not the bright, shiny whites of TOS that it really should be. Oh. But that being said, I do really like this ship. Um, and if we want to go to the next picture, mm. I guess <laughs> this is a shot of it from the bottom being destroyed. And here I get it very much. <laughs> A galore type feel, not only just the color, but the shape of that bottom section. Mm. Uh, I, this is where I get that Cardassian vibe from from the ship. Mm. It almost feels Cardassian in nature. Um, could just be me that sees that, but definitely the co- coloring of the ship doesn't help. It's got that orangish kind of <laughs> copper color. Um, so I don't know what you think about that. Uh, yeah, I mean galore, sure. Yeah, uh, uh, certainly close. It, it just feels like they've slapped on a big bay, which is fine. Speaking of bay, I just realized it looks like those are fly-through hangars. Looks like they have entrances at the front and the back. See, the, the, the problem with that is that if you look at the back pieces, they kind of... There's a very teeny orange tint. Mm-hmm. And if they, are, if they are not impulse engines, where are the impulse engines? Um, they now, could be. Like, there could be like the lower part could be the doors, and the upper part could be the impulse engines. Or the opposite. Or the opposite. Um, I, I fly throughs. I would buy that. Um, it's not actually a big ship. If you look at windows, it's actually less big than a lot of the ones we've been looking at. I think it's it's still big, but like I think it's a little bit smaller. So that bay would be like just a hangar. Which I feel like we've looked at some other discovery ships, and they we don't see a secondary hull a, a zone. Like we don't see that view. I thought this is going to be very similar to a lot of those ships, big bulky shapes just sort of attached, <laughs> very on TOS actually, which has nice. Well, I guess the shuttle, but nice smooth shapes. That we, I guess we haven't got that advanced yet. But that's one thing Johnny said uh, uh, to us, and I think publicly as well. You know, the the binary star fleet. You know, the the pre TOS fleet was designed to be a mass variety. We've always seen the huge difference in the Bassard types, which is a good indicator of when they were designed and such. So what we see could in fact reflect 70 years of evolution of designs, you know. And so it's this evolutionary line, and, or, and this is still the period when other races are having more influence on design, so this could be more a Tellarite or more this. So you, you, you're having these hugely variety, varied shapes, which then evolves into very similar shapes, because that's just the, the uniformality of, of the singular Starfleet design. Um, but I'm kind of surprised how blocky the bottom is. But it actually doesn't... It doesn't... It feels like a boat. It's got a boat vibe. 
or an aircraft carrier. Kind of, yeah. yeah. But it actually does work, especially with the engines. And speaking of the engines, Stuart, why is the back part of the engine totally glowing? <sighs> because glowy things represent things that are happening. I don't know. Um, we've seen glowy elements at the back of the cells before. Uh, on, the, on the Franklin, but that was still a ball. Uh, I know, and it shouldn't be that bright. It should be like little pinholes, like little holes. Um, yeah, that, that's a huge part of the Bassard. I mean, by, by the end of that stage. I mean, honestly, I mean, it looks good. It looks good, <clears throat> in my opinion. But well, the thing is, that the nacelles don't provide thrust like that, unless those well, are the impulse engines built into the back. I was about to say, I feel like that almost might be the way they did it, just because if this if this is going to be a slower ship, less coils, less tech. Put the impulse at the back. You have the fly-through hanger. You have the saucer. Maybe that. Maybe that's why you have two sets of connecting points because it actually does have the impulse does shoot plasma back. You know, it is it, that is some sort of thrust in some in well in, in whatever. So maybe the double pylons say, well, we need that for a pylonic impulse. Although to be <laughs> although or, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, I mean um, uh, nacelic impulse. Although if you go back to the sketch of the next few, <clears throat> there are those chiller grills. Which are meant to be vents, but you could like argue that uh, Voyager style impulse engines, which are a little mm, bit too mm -hmm. advanced, but they could be there. Um, but they're not lit up in the. If you go back to picture two, they are. They don't exist in that version as lit up. So I would doubt that again. <laughs> not like it would be blown up. Who knows? Yeah, oh, and in that. that picture of it getting destroyed from the bottom there, yeah. um, obviously we're in, they're in a battle situation, so you would be trying to maneuver out of the way. So those could definitely be impulse engines. So if we do stay on this last picture of the original sketch, which is a nice clean view, um, now we've discussed it, now we've thought about it, how do you feel now? <sighs> Not Cardassian. <laughs> Um, just when I saw that picture at the bottom, I just that's what popped into my mind. Um, I really Ooh. like it. Oh, oh. <laughs> Do you remember <laughs> that that uh, Vulcan cargo ship that had the two like almost ex uh, Tie Fighter style side pieces and then the the two prongs at the front? Yeah, I remember that ship very well, actually. <laughs> well, if you remember the bridge module, kind of like pushes out in a a shape that you kind of relate to this first. This front bridge module that kind of pushes out. Like it's it's not a million miles off. You can imagine that would be a Vulcan influence piece. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sorry, I just saw it. I was like, oh, from a from a ship. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. Yeah, and you definitely see windows in the bridge. Yeah, I, I, I and like I said, I do really like this design. Something about it is unique, um, and it does tie in visually with Enterprise, which is cool. Uh, which and Vulcans, older ship, amazingly. Yeah, but it implies older ship with that that front deflector part but the rest of the ship screams more modern especially the nacelles so it's like a nice blend between the discovery and enterprise nx01 it's got elements from both so it's like perfect if, if there was no tos this would be a perfect hybrid of the eras mm -hmm. yeah absolutely e even the saucer shape the way it angles kind of feels nx -y. and mm -hmm. actually even the as taking yeah it, 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 it's one of the more detailed of the, of the ships Clearly, they had a more distinct idea of where this one was going to go when they sketched it, because there's a lot more pieces to this. Um, yeah, I, I, it's really interesting, actually. Um, I, I want to know the function. I want to know, because obviously it hasn't got a line of sight, it hasn't got, you know, but if you're using Vulcan warp tech, then, you know, that, that rule is, well, well, okay, whatever. Maybe, maybe it's line of sighting through the pylons, or whatever. It's interesting. It's, it's, I'm, it's not what I would have thought. Of would have existed, but I can buy it as a really old NX Vulcan hybrid that's still knocking around. And I think if I saw this in Enterprise, actually Enterprise like season five, I would have been surprised but accepting. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Totally yeah. agree. Not TOS though. <laughs> But uh, but uh, yeah, it's it, it's a good design. It's it's a, a yeah, good design. I agree. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Do you like it? If so, please click the like button. Did you like our discussion on it? Because we always like, surprise ourselves with the things we come up with in these these talks. So. Yes. And they're fun. Um, yeah. And if you want to help us out, you can do so. There's a link in the description below. 
that yep. says Trek Yards Patreon, click that. Go check out our Patreon. And if you want to help us out on a monthly basis, you can do so over there. Or head on over to trekyards.com and yes. click the donate button. And I feel the commander wants to say something, so go ahead. Well, I mean, if you can't support financially, and that's fine. Just watch the show, subscribe to the channel, make sure to click bell notification to know what automatically notified when things come out. Like our videos, that helps the analytics. Uh, we also subscribe. Go onto our Facebook at Trek Yards, the, the group and the page. Page for outside updates to the group for... Just a crazy amount of ship discussion. I think we're like the, the not necessarily the mecca, but a focal point of really good, hardcore ship discussion about everything ship. So join the community, uh, enjoy, and just be part of the Trekkers family. That's right. There's a lot of ship on our page. So I uh, get it. Uh... Finish the extra, Stuart. Or the outro, that's a better word. Sorry, that was just a sh shippy pun. Anyway, I'm Captain Foley. We'll see you next time. Bye. Uh... <laughs>